Hello everybody and um, good afternoon. I'd like to thank you a lot for having me on the panel. If you told me last year that I'll be sitting here and stand up for racism given a, on my account, I'd think you're crazy, but times change. Um, us as residents at the moment, everyone's still um, traumatised and um, still, how can I say it? It's not only our homes we've lost, we've lost neighbours, we've lost friends, we've lost family members. Um, it, it, it's been a devastating time for everyone, not only for, 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 for the residents of the tower itself, but for the wider community in general in London and everywhere else. Um, with regards to institutionalised racism, if you like, or we've been experiencing this from, from years. I mean, inequality within, within the institution, with, um, uh, neglect, we've got, we've got someone in the audience today that has been campaigning and has been bringing this thing to their attention for years. Uh, we, we need this changed, we need uh, fire safety, you, you're forgetting <coughs> us. And it, it kind of makes you think whether, is it subconscious or is it conscious? Is this kind of attitude deliberate or is it just embedded in the culture of um, institutions and, and councils and government or whatever it is? Um, and then you start wondering if if one of their family members were living in that building, would this have happened? Would this have have happened? Um, if 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 it was if it wasn't full of migrant and immigrants and as they as they, as they want to say are minorities, uh, would they have taken more care? Would they have listened to the main issues that we'll be raising? Uh, again, it, it's it's questions that you never know whether it's deliberate or not, but that's the situation we find ourselves in. Um, as far as Kensington is concerned, we've got the south of the borough, we've got the north of the borough, and the south of the borough is the more rich, the more upper class, the, 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 the more important people, if you like, <laughs> in their eyes. And us from the deprived area, yeah, we, we, we've kind of been marginalised to a certain extent. We see this within housing policies, we see this within schools, and, and these are the two main subjects I want to touch on. Um, the schools, there's, there's certain schools on the south of the borough, on the south of the side, that if you go to I don't know, the generation before me and the generation before that, most of the people from the north of the borough actually went to that school. And in recent years, what you started to find is they're trying to push us back to the north of the borough and trying to say, oh no, you know, we only can take a certain percentage of people from the north of the borough and we want more from the south. So they're kind of pushing us, uh, pushing us away in a, in, a, in, a, in a nice way. As everyone knows with the Grenfell Tower as well, um, they've been, they, they wanted to demolish it at one stage and then like, people petitioned and people stopped and it can't happen and there's a load of leaseholders, by the way. So, uh, people own their flats. It's not like everyone's on the dole and everyone's claiming job seekers and everyone's... Uh, this is a misconception that they've given. But, um, so it is kind of systematic how they've always been trying to push us slowly, slowly out of the borough um, for developments and for um, the rich. So it's been obvious where their priorities lie and where their loyalties lie. And it's not with us, uh, whether it's are, 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 are the poorer back, the poorer people or the migrants or the people from ethnic backgrounds. Um, also, another subject I want to touch on, and I'm not, like I said, I'm not used to speaking on all, all these policies and there's more qualified people to talk about them sitting in the crowd today, however, I've, I've been um, given this task to uh, push. Um, what I want to talk about, and this is something very close to me and I'm, I feel very passionate about, and that is how the, the, the media especially has demonised our community throughout the years. And, it's, and Grenfell Tower is a disaster and it's, it's terrible, but it's brought so much good. So much good has come out of it. And one of the good things is pre-fire, youth were demonised in our area whether it's from black background, whether it's from poor background, whether it's from Muslim background. And they've installed, with their, with their systematic abuse of this dividing kind of communities, they've actually kind of <coughs> subconsciously installed it in the communities themselves. So when you have the South of the Bar, if I go to the South of the Bar, they start looking at me in a certain way, well, oh boy, is he, is he, has he got a bag on his back? Or if, if a black person, is he gonna try and... So there's always that tension, however, during the fire, something amazing happened on the 14th of June, and that was that 
I would say a good 60-70% of the people that were trying to save people on that night were actually youth. Youth from black um, uh, heritage, youth from Asian heritage, and a lot, a lot of Muslim youth. With their risk in their lives to save people from the tower. No matter what religion you were from, no matter what colour you were from, they were there trying to save people. Unfortunately, unfortunately, I don't know about you lot, but I haven't seen nothing in the media saying that. Uh, I, I've seen a lot of things. I've seen, oh, um, they're getting offered houses in Kensington Row, and oh, uh, they want this and they want that. And the truth is, look, not everyone's the same. I know uh, Loki uh, touched on the donation bases. Um, are people aware that a lot of people don't even accept donations? I don't think that came in the media either. <laughs> um, uh, people don't want to move to the south of the borough. People are happy in the north of the borough. So. I think the main problem we have is media and is the demonization of communities, whether it be from ethnic backgrounds, minorities, Muslim, non-Muslim, and they, they wedge this divide. And it wasn't until, well, this fire happened, and, and I want to mention, I'm Muslim. And believe it or not, the most response I got was from the Jewish community. Now, everyone loves to put in the media that Muslims and Jews and this, and they don't get along. It's a myth. <laughs> it's all in the media. <laughs> so to summarise, what I want to say is, it doesn't stop here. We, we're sitting here today and, we, and we're, we're all passionate about what we're talking about. However, what, what counts is when we leave this building, and it's down to me, the buck starts with me and you, to carry on this fight. And of course, uh, uh, Diane, yeah, yeah, she has to follow this fight. But we have to push this, and, and it's, it's unacceptable that the culture in the council and the culture in general it, it is disgusting. It's a disgusting culture. And, and yeah, it has to stop, and we have to do something about it, and we should carry on. <laughs> Thank you.